college. Um, and although our, per, our preference is for an on-campus in-person uh, panel event, I hope that this time will be beneficial to applicants as you begin to picture yourself as a CRB student. Um, before we continue, we ask that all attendees fill out the Google form provided in the chat to help us keep track of attendance. Um, I'll give you a moment to fill that out. Ms. Via, I will share that link in just a moment. Yeah. So we can continue on. I'm going to admit a few more guests, so we'll continue on and then I'll share that link. Sounds good. All right, so the purpose of this panel is for our applicants or separate students and their families to learn more about what it's like to be a student at Christa Ray and how our faculty and staff are ready to support each and every student. You will hear firsthand from our amazing alumni who spent four years at CRB, graduated, and are now enrolled at various colleges and universities. We ask that all attendees must uh, mute their mics for this presentation. Uh, we welcome you to submit questions through the chat, which will we then uh, pose to pose regularly to our alumni panelists. Um, we'll give each alumni the opportunity to answer each question. Before we continue with the program, as is tradition here at Christa Ray, let's begin with prayer. May we all remember that we are in the presence of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, today we pray for clarity and truth. Clarity so that we may clearly convey all the incredible, joyous, and important works being done in our building and throughout this community. By the students, faculty, and staff of Christa Ray Boston. We pray for truth so that these families can make the best choice for their son or daughter and that they find a school community that not only educates students, but makes them feel loved and valued as well. We ask this in the name of, in the, name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask my colleague, my colleague uh, Nicole or Ms. Malika to introduce herself and give a brief overview of our school. Nicole? Hi, everyone. Good evening. As uh, Ms. Villa said, my name is Ms. Malika or Nicole. You can refer to me as either. <laughs> Um, but I am so excited to see so many uh, names and faces in tonight's call. I recognize a lot of names here, so I'm excited to put some faces to names. To our alumni, thank you so much for joining us tonight and being open to sharing your experience with our uh, students and families. So to begin, I just want to go over who we are at Christa Ray Boston. We like to call our own community CRB. So you will hear that three letter acronym throughout the presentation tonight and throughout our panelists answers. But most importantly, uh, we are a Catholic high school located in Savin Hill, Dorchester. We are conveniently located right across the Savin Hill um, stop on the MBTA red line. We are a Catholic high school that exclusively serves families of limited economic resources. It is part of our mission and is something that we um, strive to achieve year after year. One of the most identifiable characteristics of our education is our corporate work study program, which we will certainly talk about later. But each student at Crystal Ray Boston is required to work one day a week, all four years of their time at Crystal Ray. So it's a fantastic program. You won't find any other program like this at any other high school in the city of Boston. And it provides students with wonderful experience, opportunity, um, and certainly connections and mentoring um, experiences for their time at Crystal Ray. We are a college prep curriculum. So you are going to be challenged by your teachers, but you're also going to be supported. So we uh, value, um, value the personal relationships that each faculty member has with all of our students. All of our students are known by their first name and certainly um, faculty and staff know all the students in the building. Um, well, how we like to frame our conversations and our presentations is around the phrase, discover yourself. We recognize that as students now, you have had experiences leading up to this current moment. Those experiences are going to continue to influence you, influence the student that you are and the young adult that you're becoming. At Krista Ray, we are going to help you and support you through that process. We recognize that you are a young individual, both in and out of the classroom, and we will support you through your whole growth. So a very holistic approach here at Krista Ray. 
Our four values that you'll see posted on this slide are dignity, perseverance, growth, and generosity. And those four values truly are woven into each and every class at Crystal Ray, each and every experience, co-curricular opportunity, and volunteer opportunity. Our panelists will certainly touch upon those values and their answers to the questions that we will post to them. And I hope that their answers to questions will certainly um, create or you know, encourage you to ask similar questions as well. So this opportunity, this conversation is just as much for you as it is for us to talk about our little community over at 100 Savin Hill Ave. So before we begin, I would like to share one very important and exciting announcement that we made last week in our rolling out this week in our social media and press releases. But um, new announcement is that any accepted student to Crystal Ray Boston will receive a full tuition scholarship to cover all tuition related expenses. So this scholarship is automatically renewed for each student contingent upon the student maintaining and remaining in good academic and good corporate work study standing. This is a fantastic opportunity. We are so thrilled and so thankful that we can offer this to our prospective students and families. But again, Crystal Ray Boston is now a full tuition scholarship school where students are granted that full, um, full scholarship. Uh, the only things that are not covered in that full scholarship are a few fees that would not exceed more than $300 in a given year. Those fees would include a technology fee, activities fee, and your enrollment and re-enrollment fee. Um, that $300 is on a sliding scale. So that is where the, your financial aid forms will come into play. So each family will be paying a fee that is appropriate for their um, financial standing. So again, we're so excited to welcome you here to our event tonight. I'll hand it over to Ms. Bia to introduce our panelists. Thank you, Nicole. Um, if you have any questions about what um, Ms. Malika went over, please reach out to us directly in the chat and we can address your question at the end or at a later time. Um, and before um, the panelists introduce themselves, I want, um, I'm going to ask my other colleague, Victor, our Mr. Torres, to introduce himself as he was also an integral part of organizing this event. Victor? Can you guys hear me pretty good? Yes. All right, perfect. Uh, just wanna say hi to everybody who joined. Uh, my name is Victor Torres. I am the alumni advisor at Chris Ray Boston. And uh, essentially my role is just to support, you know, uh, uh, our graduates when they're off at college, you know, they're, they're gonna be by themselves at first. They won't really know anybody. They won't know where, you know, the offices are. And that's when, you know, they'll kind of come back to Krista Ray, come back to a familiar face, which is myself. Um, and, and, you know, they'll ask me and then I'll just kind of sort of be that, that bridge and connecting them back to, to the college, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I, I, I love this role. I love helping these, you know, uh, young adults sort of navigate through their college process and just sort of help them out wherever they need. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing their experiences as well. So thank you guys for joining and being here tonight. Thank you, Victor. Um, so at this time, we will begin the panel by having our alumni introduce themselves in the order displayed on the screen. Um, alumni, please say your name, your CRB graduation year, and the college you currently attend and what year you're in. Um, Gabriel, let's start with you, please. Hi, so yeah, I'm Gabriel Murphy. Um, I graduated in Crystal Ray in uh, 2017 and I'm at Boston College and I'm gonna be graduating this year. Hi, my name is Justina Baker. Um, I graduated Crystal Ray in 2019 and um, currently I go to Denison University and I'm a sophomore. My name is Alejandro Franco. I graduated class of 2019. I attend UMass Dartmouth and, I, and I, this is my sophomore year. Hello, I'm Penelope Soto. I graduated in 2018. I go to Bentley University and I'm graduating in spring of 2022. All right, thank you so much alumni for introducing yourself. Um, so now let's begin um, with, with our first question. Um, how would you describe your experience as a Crystal Ray Boston student? Um, alumni, please answer the question in the order of your introductions. Yeah, so um, I think when I first came in to Crystal Ray, um, a lot of it was just getting a feel for how 
the school was and how the corporate work study program worked uh, along with the academic um, yeah, academic program. So I think I really enjoyed uh, my corporate work study experiences. My first year was a little, it was a little difficult, I think, because um, corporate work study can be rigorous and it can be um, easier sometimes too. So when I first started, I was doing um, data entry, but I wasn't very good at it. I didn't have great typing skills. So um, the corporate work study office talked to me and they said, um, it'd be really good if you know you came in and you talked with us and maybe we put you through a few programs to work on your typing skills. So um, I did that. I worked on my uh, information literacy a little bit more. Um, and that was a that was a good experience, I think, with corporate work study, but I was ready for something a little bit more after that. And I wanted to um, work in a few other companies and get a, a sense for uh, where I was working. So then after that, I went to Clifton Larson Allen LLP, which is in Quincy. Um, and that was a really cool experience. I found some really, really um, amazing bosses while I was there. Ones that I had uh, previously talked with for a long time. Um, and they were super friendly. They offered me uh, job positions when I was in college before COVID. Um, so I was able to go in and earn money in the summer. And then um, I worked with them and moved into their subsidiary, which is uh, Bankers Advisory. And they were also an amazing um, company. Um, the bosses that I had throughout my four years were always there, were always willing to um, be friendly. They were receptive to questions. Um, and uh, my boss, Michelle, and uh, my bosses, Lee Goodyear, um, they both came to my, uh, my speech. Um, I think it was in, right in the spring of 2017. They were very supportive. They were very active in the Crystal Ray community. They would talk with uh, people within the administration. And uh, they, were, they were people that I, you know, I could always look up to, I could always go to for information, for questions. Um, and it was really helpful once, you know, the summer before my freshman year of college came, um, you know, I, they offered me a job. They gave me a, a pretty decent job just doing uh, tasks around the office, which eventually I could put on a resume. And that, that just helped me, um, I guess, I guess like after, after high school, your resume is very important. And uh, you should never forget to add those corporate work study jobs to it. They, they helped me get a job in um, Boston College's HR department where I'm currently working. And um, so far I love my bosses there too. I just started two weeks ago, um, but I wouldn't be able to do that without the corporate work study program. It's almost something that you should really cherish and just take advantage of when you're here because they do give you a lot of amazing resources, a lot of people to talk to. I think that was, like my favorite part about Krista Ray in a lot of ways. I think the academic side was really good too. Um, it was rigorous. Um, when teachers felt like I needed to be challenged more, they would come up to me, they would say, do you need more work? Um, and that was really helpful. Uh, when Miss Grimaldi was there, I don't think she's there anymore, but uh, she was super helpful for me. She was my English teacher who uh, helped me kind of figure out what minor I wanted to do in college. So that was, she was really helpful in that time, uh, she wrote my recommendation. So the professor, I mean professors, the teachers really want you to, uh, to excel. They really, really want you to. That's really why they're there. Um, and they're always willing to extend a hand. Um, I made great friends, people that I still talk with, uh, people that weren't even in my class year I'm still working with. I do sound design. So I have a couple of friends uh, that live around uh, the Savin Hill area too still, I think. Um, that have been doing that and I've just been able to stay in touch with them uh, kind of get a feel for what they're doing in life and uh, that's been an amazing experience too to see Krista Ray kind of still trickle into your life after high school. Thank you Gabriel. Um, Justina how would you describe your experience as a Krista Ray Boston student? Yeah, so kind of similar to Gabriel, um, I kind of came into Chris Ray kind of shaky and nervous. High school was a, a new idea to me. And so I was kind of testing the boundaries of like, what am I going to do and what strategies am I going to do to combat my freshman year? Um, 
I think a lot of the times I um, challenge myself and also um, kind of took risks. I know a lot of times that I would show up late and um, really like, what's the word? <laughs> Words. Yeah. So. I just know that like my freshman year was kind of like shaky and um, I, would, I was kind of figuring out myself. And so as the years progressed, um, I kind of figured out what I wanted out of Crystal Ray and the teachers that I had and the friends that I made really made, um, made an impact on me. I know one of my teachers, Mr. Kaufman, and I think he's still there. Um, every time I go back to Crystal Ray, I always go see him. Um, he, was a, he is an amazing English teacher and he really pushed me in my writing and my creativity. And I had a lot of other teachers who also did that um, and kind of made my, my high school experience very worthwhile at the end. Um, as far as my corporate work study job, I know my freshman year, I worked at a nonprofit. I found out really fast that that's not the track that I wanted to go down. But thanks to CRB, I was able to figure that out for myself. And um, the opportunities that I was given to go to different cor corporate work study programs um, really helped me shape kind of what I wanted to do. And so for the following three years after that, I worked at a law firm and I fell in love with law. And I don't think I would have gotten that experience anywhere else, um, given if I went to a public um, school. And yeah, I just, I think throughout Chris Rea, I there was a lot of trial and error, but I had teachers and friends that were really supportive of that. And it was like more like a judgment-free zone because we were, also, we were all still learning at the time and still figuring out what that was for us and what high school was for us. Yeah. Thank you, Justina. Um, Alejandro and Penelope, I'm gonna have you answer the next question, okay? So the next one is, what sets Crystal Ray Boston apart from other high school experiences in the city? Alejandro? Me personally, to answer that question, what I feel like what sets Crystal Ray apart would be the Code for Work Study Program. Like um, Justine and Gabe said, at an early age, like I wasn't really working until I went to Crystal Ray and being put in, the, in those different types of um, businesses. Like my freshman year, I got put in, um, I was working as an intern for Hood and they really made me feel like one of the a, a part of the team and like at an early age i got to see from a perspective of like what i want to do in life and like different routes i want to take what works for me and what doesn't and i feel like that really helped me a lot thank you ale Penelope? well this is very easy definitely couple work study is what differentiates crb from every other high school like you are never gonna get this experience anywhere else. Like corporate work study, like I feel like I am where I am today thanks to corporate work study because I had the opportunity of like trying a lot of different places, different industries. It helped me figure out what I like. My first job was the Boston Consulting Group in an office. I was like 15, so I was like the youngest person in an office full of adults, professionals wearing like, just dressed up and I was like, oh, office is not for me. I wanna try something else. But then I, I had friends who like fell in love with their job from their first year and they stayed there all four years. And there was me who like wanted to try everything else. So I switched every single year. And it didn't mean that I didn't like my jobs. I just wanted to like try everything out. Like I made sure that I took advantage of this opportunity and tried everything that I could. I worked in schools, offices, I worked in the hospital. So this is, yeah, like no, no other, no other student in my college year were able to say like, oh, I worked in all these different places already. Like Gabriel said, I went into freshman year with a resume full of jobs already. A bunch of people had the resume empty, and I'm like, nope, I already worked at four different places. I did this, I did that, so that was great. Thank you, Penelope. Um, Gabriel, so how did Chris Ray prepare you for college? That, it's a loaded question in some ways um, because the thing about college is college is always a shock. You know, college will always be a shock. Um, when you first get there, the like social life is something that you really think about just because, you know, you get in there and you're like, oh, like tons of new people my age um, and they're from all over the country. So you want to talk to all of them. Um, 
And I think that what's nice with Crystal Ray is it's small class sizes. So you really do engage in a lot of dialogue with other people. Um, that was something that really helped me develop just interpersonal skills, which was amazing. Um, I think academically, um, professors would give you content sometimes, or professors, I keep saying it, teachers um, would give you content that would push you a little bit. I remember um, Mr. U Phelps, who you'll either take freshman year or your senior year, if the, if the schedule is still the same. Um, he's one of my favorite teachers at the school too. Um, and he introduced me to ethics and philosophy, which when I came into BC, you know, I, I took Western perspectives, which was honestly very challenging, but without him giving me a little bit of background on um, ethics and perspective, um, I don't think I would have succeeded as well. So it's not just about giving you what you need to get through high school. It really is about giving you what you need to get through you know, even your first couple of years in college. And then eventually you move on through college and college reinforces the habits that, the good habits that you start to develop your freshman year of college. But I think Krista Ray definitely helped develop my social skills. Um, they made sure that, you know, I had exposure to certain co concepts that college would expose me to. And um, I think even sports too. Sports was, you know, when I was at Crystal Ray, I played basketball. I was varsity for three years. And, um, you know, you, you learn to play hard. You learn to play, you know, the right way. Um, and they, like my coach, uh, Joseph Stewart, who I don't think is there anymore, but he, um, you know, he would push us. He, he really wanted us to succeed in different ways. He would say, hey, you're doing basketball. Like, you're not a fast runner. Maybe you should get into track and learn how to run. So. You know, there's really just a community there. So when you get to co when you get to college, you start looking for communities, and I think that always benefits you in the long run. We can pause at this time. Do any students or families have any questions you'd like to ask out loud? You can unmute your mic if you'd like. All right, if you do have any questions, feel free to send them in the chat and I can certainly ask them out loud. Um, Ms. Via, we can go on to the next question. Um, just that, how did Chris Ray prepare you for college? Okay, um, so I have to say very similarly, what Gabriel said is definitely the social setting, especially because my school is also, I would say reflecting Chris Ray, like especially the the school size and the class size and also just how tight knit our community is here. Um, and I feel like it also helped me like build relationships, not just among my friend group, but also with my teachers, which is also a skill that I see myself reflecting in college too, um, just because it's very important to connect and to um, build your social network, especially as you're, you're moving up in your, your career and your school levels. Um, and I think also going having my corporate work study job, having that real world real world experience um, really shaped me for who I am and how I develop my personality. Um, I know that I use a lot of the skills, the communication skills and the writing skills um, from my corporate work, uh, corporate work study experience and I've brought it to my, my college experience also. Um, and also I think to add to the point about the work being rig rigorous, it is um, at points challenging, but we do have, well, we did have, I'm not there anymore, but um, my teachers were very supportive um, and were willing to work with me um, and really wanted to see me succeed. So it was nice to have that from Chris Ray too. I can jump in here just to add to just, you know, what you said is exactly right. Um, in terms of supporting our students, we have a number of different supports at Krista Ray Boston. Actually this year, um, Gabriel, we do have a partnership with Boston College. So 
um, some of the Boston College freshmen and sophomores who are in a program called Pulse. They are um, they have volunteered to mentor our freshmen um, three to four hours a week. So each ninth grader has their own BC academic mentor that they meet with weekly on um, we use Microsoft Teams um, at Crystal Ray instead of Zoom, but um, it's an opportunity for our freshmen to not only develop a relationship with a college mentor and an academic mentor, um, but to have someone that is going to um, check up on them like, hey, how are you doing with your physics homework this week? Or I know you have an algebra test next week. How can I help you study? So really helping to foster those academic skills. But that's just one support um, that all the freshmen had this year. In addition to like Justina was saying, um, support from your teachers. Uh, every faculty member um, has office hours every day, 3 to 3.30 after school. And that could be either in person or remote. So our teachers are absolutely um, available day in and day out. Some teachers actually are offering hours outside of school hours. There's one math teacher who has Sunday um, study sessions that have actually become quite popular. So um, we're happy to meet students where they're at, especially during this um, COVID time. But we have um, a couple questions that were submitted. So I'll ask this first one now. Um, so the question was, what is your favorite part about Crystal Ray? So let's have Penelope and Alejandro answer that. Well, um, Penelope, we'll start with you. Um, okay, so to get out of like academics, one of the things that I loved about CRB was the community days where we used to like get out of class and like go out into the community, either do things as a school together or as an advisor. Do you guys still have advisories? Yes, we do. Yeah. So freshmen and sophomores have advisory. Oh yeah, so we used to go like in our advisory group and do things together. I remember my advisory was really close and we would like do something for the community and then she will take us out to go eat together. We have like a bunch of pictures still and just some, like that was something to look forward to community days. I think it was for every holiday or stuff like that. So that was cool. I 100% agree with Penelope. It's definitely the community that made me love Crystal Ray. Coming here as, a, as an immigrant, most of the schools I went to before were mostly Caucasian, but the diversity really made me feel like I was safe at Crystal Ray. And also the teachers as well, the teachers are amazing. Like they're not just teachers, they're your friends. They really push you to do better and to strive and they honestly care. And that's something that really made me feel comfortable at Crystal Ray to this day. I had another question that was submitted about athletics. So I will share what athletics we currently have. And then if anyone on the panel wants to share about your own athletic experience and maybe a highlight, that would be great. But um, right now at Crystal Ray, we are offering in a normal non-COVID world, I, I should say, I should put an asterisk beside that, uh, men and women's soccer, uh, men and women's basketball, football, women's volleyball, softball, baseball, cheerleading, and then new this year is tennis, men and women's tennis. Um, so with uh, the COVID pandemic um, kind of changing the athletic schedule this year, we are about to launch, it's almost football season, which is odd to say in February, um, that's almost football season and we just wrapped up basketball season. Um, one highlight from this year's basketball season is one of our seniors, Ray, he scored his 1000th point. So we were so excited to congratulate and support him in that achievement. So that was certainly something that our whole community um, was really excited about. But I don't know if any panelists, if you want to share maybe a highlight from any of your athletic experiences, um, you can go in, in any order, really. Um, yeah, that's that's really cool that Ray uh, got that thousand. I think uh, the only person that ever did that before was Chris. So um, that was a big achievement, probably meant a lot. Um, and I saw a couple of highlights of Ray I've seen. He's been dunking on everyone, so he's he's really good. Um, I think, like, I did track a little bit, but it was more basketball. I would say that my highlight was probably making the playoffs when I was a sophomore. Um, I'd worked my way up from, from you know, a bench player to a starter that year, and um, it was really cool to be in a crowd that big, but maybe the best game I had ever been in. Uh, we played against Cathedral, and that was our rival, you know, years before I was there, but then they were really trying to spark the rivalry again because it was really fun. Um, so we went and um, we played them, and we got blown out, but the crowd 
the best thing about Krista Ray is even when you're losing, they'll still cheer for you. So, um, and it was an intense game. It was still a great game. It was amazing. So um, even like our bus ride to Philadelphia, we played against other Krista Rays in the, in uh, the Eastern region of the U S. So that was awesome. We played against Krista Ray, New York and Krista Ray, Brooklyn um, and Philadelphia too. So, um, you know, they offer you chances to get out, no places, um, play against other competition too. Um, when I first got in, people really wanted a football team and they eventually delivered it, um, which was great. So people, people were asking for it and Chris Ray is very, they listen to the students and what they want. And, um, that they have open ears. So if, if you want to play a sport or you want an opportunity to do a sport, um, they definitely take the time to listen. And they really do want you uh, to succeed in athletics too. Um, so I had a very good experience. Any other panelists want to chime in before we move on? There was another follow-up question about can freshmen play on the football team? So I'll generalize that in, in terms of all athletics that yes, freshmen are eligible to play on our athletic teams, including football. Um, so what we do at the beginning of the normal season is you would just fill out a form and indicate that you're interested in playing. We make sure that we have all your up-to-date medical records um, and then you are able to um, try out and get on the team. So we do hold our athletes to a, an academic standard too as part of the MIAA guidelines. So students do have to be an academic, um, have to remain in good academic standing in order to participate in athletics. Um, before we go on, Ms. Villa has another question, but um, before we go on, I do wanna share a little bit more about community. So um, in this remote world, we are still building community. So um, at CRV, actually, our students have had the opportunity to come into the building for classes if they are comfortable doing so and if their families are comfortable with them coming into the building. Um, but we've kept all of our students socially distant and safe. And um, I think it's really been a great asset and opportunity for, for our students. So the students that know that they learn better in the classroom and learn better talking to a teacher in person, we've been really happy to offer that support to them. Um, but tomorrow is actually our second community community day of the year. We're doing it remotely and um, all of our students will log on to their first period class. Uh, we'll take attendance there, start with a prayer, and then we are doing a virtual scavenger hunt. So I am on a senior team tomorrow with our principal. So the two of us are leading um, a group of 10 seniors through a scavenger hunt. So every student is on a team led by one to two faculty members. So um, the students are certainly really excited today leading into tomorrow. Um, so it's a, you know, a, good, a good time to take a step back the day before February break and just have a little fun with each other. Um, but Ms. Via, I know you had another question, so I'll let you pose that to the panelists. Yeah, so um, when you were struggling with academics, how did you seek support? Uh, let's go with Jacina. So the good thing about Krista Ray is that um, every teacher wants to support you. And so it didn't seem like a bother when I went up and asked for help. And so, the, and also your teachers will, <clears throat> excuse me, your teachers openly communicate that they're here to help you and that you can come and talk to them. And I think establishing that relationship with the students um, makes it easier for me to open up. And I think anybody else who um, can relate. And also I think that because now that they have office hours, that's like another layer of saying like, we're here to help and we wanna support you. And I believe my teachers also had similar things. I know my, a lot of my teachers would say after school just because. And so that's also like another key thing that they wanted to be here. They wanted to um, support me and they wanted to listen to me and make sure that I understood. And so for me, I would just go up to my teacher either during class or after class and ask for support and help. Thank you, Jacina. Um, Alejandro? Um, just as Adina said, the teachers are more than willing to help with anything they want to help you. If you always walk around the halls, the doors are always open during school, after school. 
if you're not comfortable um, with the group, they always talk to you about having one-on-one -on -one meetings. The teachers will always be there for you. And that's something that I can say I felt in my experience. Even when like, when your grades aren't good, they won't like, and you don't reach out to them, they will reach out to you and ask you like, what plans you wanna to do to help better your grades, what route you wanna take. Is there anything going on back home that they can work with to help you better succeed academically? And yeah. All right, so we actually got another uh, submitted question. So thank you. The question was, are there study periods during the school day or office hours offered before and after school? So um, yes and no. So we don't have an official study period or study hall during the day. It's not its own dedicated class time. However, um, you know, students that want to, so um, Penelope had mentioned advisory earlier. So this year, freshmen and sophomores have advisory. So those two classes focus on a lot of academic skills and social and emotional skills, but there's also opportunity for students to meet with their other teachers during that time. So that's more a couple periods that are more flexible. So it is somewhat built in that students can use that time to either go talk to their guidance counselor or check in with the teacher if that teacher also has a free period. So no official study periods during the day, um, but there's definitely built in support. Um, to that point, this year, um, our academic schedule, the first class doesn't begin until 10 a.m. and faculty are in the building at 7.30. <laughs> so there's plenty of time in the morning if students want to come in in the morning um, for early office hours. So um, faculty are certainly available in the morning and certainly after school. And like I mentioned in reference earlier, during this COVID and pandemic state, a lot of teachers have also offered evening office hours as well as weekend office hours. So we know that students and families have such different schedules this year. So we really want to make sure that students and families are offered the amount of support that they need to be successful um, at all different times of the day. <laughs> so I hope that answered that question there. Um, Again, if anyone has any other submitted questions, we're going to slowly begin to wrap up, um, but feel free to send in any more chats with questions. And Ms. Via has uh, a question she'd like to wrap up with. Thanks, Ms. Malaka. Um, so the last question for our alumni is, what advice would you give students entering their first year at Chris Curray? Um, Penelope, let's start with you. Um, I would say to use your resources, like get to know all your teachers, all the staff, because they are going to help you while you're a CRB and even after you leave. Like, um, Taurus e sends emails every year about helping us with FAFSA or like whatever we need, which I still appreciate so much. And it's like, yeah, like if you get to know your teachers and they start, like they will start caring for you. So they're going to help you with whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be like school related. Like they would help you with whatever, trust me. So use your resources, get to know everybody. and ask for help whenever you need it because they will help you. Thank you. Um, what about you, Gabe? What advice would you give? Um, something that I remember, there was someone in my class once who, um, who you know, she worked really, really hard. Um, and it was senior year and she was trying to get her GPA up because she wanted to get into college. Um, and I think a mistake sometimes that people make is they come in freshman year and they slack a little bit, um, understandably, because it's new experience and, um, and you're not used to it. It's new people. You wanna do the things that you wanna do. You've been looking forward to high school for such a long time. Um, my advice is get, working freshman year, work as hard as you can. Um, because if you start off with a lower GPA, you're gonna be working to get it up. But if you start off with a high GPA, you're only gonna be working to get it up. And if it falls down a little bit, you have a cushion because you worked super hard that first year. Um, big, big emphasis on that. Um, I was lucky because I started off uh, really well. Um, I think another thing, that I would say is important is go to those office hours. Stay after school, talk to every single teacher that you have, you know, and it doesn't have to be like every every day you see them after school, but 
at least once a week, check in with them, say, how am I doing? What does the grade book look like? Like, how can I get it better? Like, can I submit an assignment? Can I like redo this math test? Because sometimes, sometimes people, they'll help you out with that. At least from my experience when I was there. Um, that's big. Sports. I really like sports. I enjoyed it. But I'm, I'm telling you now, when you come in, it's really important to understand that academics comes before sports because this, this isn't a D1 um, school. We're not, a, we're not the best basketball team in the state. We're not the best football team in the state. Well, we did pretty good in football. But what I'll, what I'll say is this. If you're thinking about sports when you come in, do it if you can. Play JV. If you get varsity, play varsity. But if you have a choice between submitting an assignment and playing a game, always take academics first. It's really important. Um, and also, you know, just be kind, be friendly with people, enjoy, enjoy that time because it's a very, you know, once you leave high school, it's, it's over and, you know, you're moving on to another phase of life that's going to get a little bit more difficult and, um, enjoy the time that you have while you're there because the people that you meet there, are, um, they're very good people. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. Um, Justina and Alejandro, really quickly, just say uh, um, like one sentence advice for um, incoming freshmen. Um, I would say trial and error. I was one of the students that slacked off, but um, as you figure out what, what you want and what you, you're trying to pursue, you kind of figure out that level, that ground level where you want to go and just build from there, kind of reiterating what Gabriel said, like, um, Build a foundation so you can build yourself up and have that cushion so you can fall back down if you need to. So something besides academics, honestly, just get involved, you know? Crystal Ray was, I had such a fun experience at Crystal Ray. Like there's so many things to do, so many nice people to meet. And honestly, like I couldn't ask for more. Like I still have teachers I talk to every day. I still have friends I still talk to um, that from there that I talk to every day to this day, you know? And especially like um, Spirit Week is one of the most funnest times of the year. Like we get we get really competitive and honestly just enjoy yourself while you're at it. Thank you, Ale. Um, alumni, thank you so much for your honest and detailed responses. We truly appreciate you taking the time to join us tonight um, to provide an insight of your experience at Crystal Ray. Um, parents and students, if you haven't submitted the application yet, um, please make sure to submit it by Monday, February 15th um, to be considered for a regular decision and receive an admissions decision by early in March. If you submit it after that, it will be considered for a um, rolling decision, which means um, it'll be on a first come first serve basis and you will get a decision as soon as we receive all supplemental documents like, re like recommendations and transcripts. For those who submitted the application, we will be contacting your schools if you are still missing the recommendations or other required documents. Um, if anyone has um, any additional questions, we are more than happy to connect with you. Um, we'll, we will put in our contact info in the chat. Um, so you can call us, you can email us um, to schedule a phone or a Zoom call with us. Additionally, we would like to let you know um, that we are offering in-person tours beginning next week on Tuesday, February 16th. The tours will be conducted in a safe, socially distanced manner with one family per tour. If you would like to register for a tour, please click on the link provided in the chat. Um, lastly, as a reminder, and for those who join a little later, um, please fill out the Google form, which will, keep us, which will help us keep track of attendance. The link is in the chat as well. Um, so thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope that our conversations um, help you picture yourself as a Christian Ray uh, Boston Knight. Our admissions email um, email address is listed on the on the on the chat. And um, I truly appreciate you taking the time this evening with us. And I genuinely look forward to uh, speaking with you individually. Be safe and have a good night. Thank you, everyone. Alumni and Mr. Torres, if you could hang tight for just one second. Students and families, have a great night.
Yay. Thank you all so much. That went so well. <laughs> you are all <laughs> great panelists. Oh my goodness. Um, on the spirit of social media, I thought it would be cute if we took a virtual photo, then we can put it on our Instagram um, tomorrow. So let me let me figure out how to do that one second. <laughs> it's not fair. Everyone has a background. It's okay, Ali. <laughs> Don't worry about Don't it. Don't worry about it. You tried. At least you tried. All right, let me start.